Good morning and welcome to the instructional video for the Swift Contiki Sport 584. It's a 2021 model and I'm going to walk you around the outside of the vehicle first and then we'll go on inside. So based on the Fiat engine, it's on a 2.3 160. It's got the mirror protectors, not standard but the customer's added these onto it. Fold in manually and they'll electrically operate inside. Behind the driver's seat you've got your water filler point. It's been fitted with a 12 volt socket at the side, so if you want to connect a water carrier to it, you can do. Simply put the key in to remove it, and that's where you fill up your fresh water. Your fresh water drain is clearly marked underneath, and it comes out of the blue pipe just there, and that's done from inside the vehicle. Behind that, we have the Alda heating uh, flue, so just make sure that you keep this well ventilated. You don't need to remove anything on this particular type. And we have a storage locker just here, which just undo, undoes with the buttons at the bottom there. Inside you'll see that there's an external shower hose which comes with it and that goes into the little socket just here. You've got your mains plug-in point just there and we've got an external locker that just slides out, your belongings, pushes in and then using one of the two keys for the external lockers locks in place just there. Behind the back wheel Again, clearly marked is your wastewater drain, so when you're lining it up, it just comes out of the little grey pipe just there. So everything clearly marked. Behind that, we've got the toilet cassette. So to remove it, lift up the handle, make sure the valve inside is in the right position, and I'll show you later how to do that. We've got the circle there to let the ventilation out so it flows freely, and you unscrew the cap to empty it. There are a handle and wheels for this particular unit. When you're finished, just slide it back in place, make sure it clips over to the little lug there. On the back panel, we've got bike rack, so with a locking point for the keys, twin camera above, and this particular one has had a tow bar fitted to it, non-standard. So there's your fuel two bike carrier. On this side, we've got access to the locker area, so underneath the bed from outside again using the keys that will lock comes with an awning on the side forward of that we've got an external mains point does clearly mark on there and a barbecue point which is supplied with a vehicle from new we've got the habitation door with a bin a blind and a fly screen and an awning light just on the side just there in front of that we've got a gas locker it will take two big gas bottles in there, so just like so, and then again push this flat and locks in place. Forward of that, we've got your diesel filler point and the AdBlue. It does need AdBlue on this particular Fiat version. And then into the cab area, we've got the bonnet release catch, club box, passenger airbag, and a heated and cooled club box there. Storage underneath the seat, just lift that up and that will give you storage. Cup holders. And then we've got the blinds, which it comes fitted with, so slide it round and then just locks in place. They're fitted to that side. We also have the ones that pull up from the front on the windscreen side. With any of these blinds, I just say be careful, just gentle opening and closing them. We've got the window switch there. There's also one on the driver's side. Underneath the bonnet, to get it, just come above the actual swift sign. And you'll see there's a little yellow lever just lift that up and under here we've got negative point positive point it's just located under this cap and use the key to gain your access to that we've got oil and dipstick and screen wash just in the corner under the blue cap so that's the outside of the vehicle for you let's move on inside and go through the controls on the actual van itself the awning i will send you a separate video of how to use a generic omnister awning so on the inside we've got two buttons here and i'm gonna start from the beginning so on both of them so your main control panel is this control panel on the right hand side here now you can also link this to your phone as well uh, and use the swift command but i'm going to talk you through how to use it step by step so whenever you select something it highlights it just like it is there tells you whether it is actually working or not so first one obviously self-explanatory is your pump next one is your awning light either on or off 
and again it makes the line bold you've got your lights so on your lights here you can either turn them on or you can turn them off and then you can dim them down to the desired setting that you want to do both at the front and the back yeah now there are designated light switch that you can turn off individually as well yeah so little switches underneath here which will turn the lights on and off switches the right the vehicle which will turn off different lights within the vehicle itself but your main control to turn the master on is just on this main control panel here to go back to your menu press the home button it'll take you back the power button this will tell you what power is in your batteries so again self-explanatory but leisure vehicle and it will also tell you what is coming into the batteries from the solar panel which is fitted as standard click the button it will go through different options for you sort of ac current uh set limit so again read your instructions to go any further forward in that otherwise go back and this then takes you to your water settings this will tell you what is in your fresh water at the bottom it also gives you some options of putting your tank heaters on your level alerts your frost alerts and your emptying your fresh or your waste to empty it click it and it will say comfort yeah once it does it it'll open the electric automatic drain valves for both the fresh and the waste now these have probes in there so you might find that 25 is the lowest that it goes down to it depends on the probes that are fitted but there's generally three probes 25 0 25 50 75 and 100 so just leave that to empty if you want to stop that so just press the button and it and it tells you confirm yeah so that's your fresh water and your wastewater levels your heating controls so they again can be done from this controller so we've either got manual mode timer mode or app mode yeah so again depending on whether you want to use it on your phone or not We've got electric or gas. So again, making sure that you've primed your boiler first. So the first thing I'd say is fill your fresh water. Make sure your drain valve for your boiler is closed. And I'll show you where that is in the video. Come to your fresh water taps on here. And they're clearly marked on the top. You want to put it through to the hot. Turn your pump on and open up that. And you'll get water flowing through. Once you've got a steady flow of water, then decide what you want to do on here. Yeah, because that's just filled the boiler up. And again, we're selecting either one kilowatt, two kilowatt, three kilowatt, or off. So let's do one. We've not got gas turned on, but if you wanted it on, you just click it on and off there. And if you want your water on, you just then either boost, press it again. And it will give you a boost of water. But make sure that you're doing that when you've got water in the system. Yeah. It'll run on the boost for, I think, five or ten minutes at the most, and then it will knock that back off. Yeah. The temperature that you want it to be in the vehicle, you just change by pressing the button at the side there. Yeah. Now, there is also the manual button here, which you can override things by. Yeah. In the same way that it works. And you'll see that it's just changing things on your app when, I'm, when I do it on here as well. Yeah. So if I do that one kilowatt, it changes on there. If I turn it off, it turns it off on that screen. So they are linked together. So you can either do it on the control panel, you can do it on here, or you can do it on your app. Back to the home setting, we've got a settings button. So you can go in pairing your Bluetooth devices, deleting them, key beeps, time, dates. There's lots of options to do on here. I would go through your manual just make sure you, you have a good look at your manual, read your manual, make sure that you're happy before you start getting into the, the, the Bluetooth inside of it. Bridge option, you've got your temperature settings. So from the coldest to the warmest. So it depends on how cold are you want it in the freezer section. Uh, on that side of it, you've got options so automatic. So that will select the source of fuel that you're trying to do. So when you're starting up your engine, it will work on the 12 volt DC. When you've plugged into mains, it will work on the 240 AC. And when you're on gas and you're not hooked up or your engine's running, it'll work on the gas. To turn it off, simply turn it off at the bottom there. Again, you can also do it manually on the actual fridge unit in exactly the same way. Yeah. So it depends on what you want to do. And if you select auto on your panel, you'll see it'll automatically kick in because we're plugged in. 
it's now telling us we've gone to electric. So everything that you do on this panel will repeat onto the panels for the heating and the fridge. Again, if we turn it off, we'll see that the unit then goes off. So everything you repeat on here will it be able to do on the individual device itself. You have got your date and your time at the top, tells you the temperature inside the vehicle, and it gives you your voltage levels just at the top. So that is the main controls of the vehicle. From, like I say, you can link it through to your app. Your heating controls at the sit at the side there. You've got carbon monoxide detector, smoke alarm. Mentioned about the tap earlier, so you've got mixer taps clearly marked on the top just there. In to the bathroom area, you'll have the same mixer tap just on here. So again, clearly marked. And again, on your shower, you've got a clearly marked mixer tap there. On the shower, you've got a little retainer here, which you will screw in place to hold it in, in place. Yeah, stop it from going along. It just pushes in and then pulls out. And that stops the door in transit moving around. We've got the little mini Eki. So press the button in, pull it down. That will open it up to ventilate this area off. And it just goes over and above, just like that. And then you've got a fly screen just on there to cover that area uh, if you're having it open. We've got little push buttons will give access to underneath storage areas. The windows, push buttons, push it in to open it up. Yeah, and then just be careful on here with your bike rack opening that, pulling it tight, make sure it's over the second lug and pull it tight in there. In there you've got fly screens and blinds built in. Push button storage above. So again, we've got some more storage above. Make sure that these are all pressed in before you move off. Yeah. Same in here. We've got more storage there. Light switch is located just there. We've got another little storage area there. And then the toilet itself, we've got the flush button. Yeah. So you've got to have fresh water in the tank for this to work. So press the button and the water will flush around in the toilet area. Mentioned right on the outside when I mentioned the toilet about this blade valve. This is moved with the little lever here. So towards the back of the vehicle will open the blade valve, towards the front will close it. It's got to be closed for you to be able to take out the actual toilet cassette. When the cassette's full, this indicator will come up red. And like I said, press the button and hold the button and that will flush the toilet itself for you. Around the bed area, we've got storage. So these just push in and you'll see that the little movement in the handle there. And it's the same on all the compartments here. We've got a TV bracket fitted and sockets just above, just up there. The bed itself will lift up on a gas strut. So you just lift it up there and that's how the bed will operate. The table is secured in place just here. Yeah, and it's just strapped in place just there. It's just a freestanding table that you lift up and put in place as and when you want to use it. And again, plenty of storage there for your belongings. We've also got a couple of winter covers that go on the fridge vent covers on the outside if it gets really cold when you're using the vehicle. We've got a couple of plug sockets and light sockets around the bedroom area as well as USB lights just there. Storage again in the drawers just here. Again, making sure that you just press them closed and then press the buttons in before transits. The little vents around are where the Aldi heating will come through. will also come through the back of the beds and around the seats and in, in the front area. To get into this cupboard, it's twist and then slide. And we've got our Aldi heating reservoir in there, which you must make sure that that is between the minimum and maximum levels. Yeah, little hanging rail just there. And then to close it, you just twist it over and it does there. We have got a concertina divide to secure off this area. Just goes across and then magnetises and pushes in, sorry, just pushes in place just like so. And that will screen off the back area from the front. Above that, we've got a turbo vent. To open that, you just select the little button here, twist it. That will open it up and then press the button on and then decide which way you want the air to come, either expelling the air out or bringing it in. Change the direction by just pressing the buttons, the fan will stop and spin the other way. Just like so. To turn it off, just press it, it will stop, and then make sure that you close it 
before any onward journeys. Same with any of the roof vents in the van, just make sure that they are closed before you drive off and that they're secured in place for your onward journey. Yeah. So this one is the same as the bathroom, where you use, press the little handle down and open it up. The only difference is it's got a blind on there as well as a flash screen, just there. Yeah. Same with this one. This is just a larger version of your Hecate and you've got your push button just there. Into the kitchen area. We've got your microwave. Again, we'll only make work on mains. The cooker, pretty similar to a domestic cooker at home. You have got an electric hob. And again, if you follow the little pictures on the actual unit itself, it'll tell you what you're doing. So electric hob. Front, left-hand side as we're looking at it. Grill, oven, front right, back right, and your igniter. Make sure your grill's open when you're using it. It does have a grill pan there. And then your oven, just there. Below it, you'll find there's a little storage area just here. And that is where the switch is for the electric element. Yeah. yeah. In the kitchen area, we've got a little compartment that opens here. And I mentioned at the beginning of the vehicle, making sure that you open and close the drain valve for the Alda heating system. This is your Alda heating system here. The drain valve is the little rocker switch just here. To drain it, lift it up, and that will drain the water out of the boiler. To stop it draining, push it down, and that will allow you to fill up the system. Yeah, so that is where your boiler's located, and that way the drain valve. So really easy to access there, guys. Make sure when you're doing it, you close in here first, and then that one just on there. Above in here, we've got your Wi-Fi. So this has got a Wi-Fi system. It's a motor Wi-Fi system. Isn't standard, but the customer's added it. And you've got your status aerial booster box and the pole itself to alter the height. Just release that. And then lift the pole up and down to give you a better signal. Yeah, there's also a frequency signal there that you can turn around to give you a stronger or a weaker signal, depending on the site that you're at. The kitchen area, we've got a couple of sockets, and I did just forget to mention, so I'll just recap. Make sure you follow the instructions that are just there, and you let it cool down before you put that down. I've seen it happen a couple of times. It's quite a messy job to clean it up. Into here, we've got your solar panel regulator, and a plate hook, and the plug for the microwave, just there. Forward of that, we've got a couple of lights, a little switch here, some speakers. TV that's been fitted by the previous owner. Some little lights. Again, these just turn on and off just on the switches. And we've got some more storage just above, just there. We've got a little pocket either side. Again, some more useful little storage. And we've got light switches that turn on and off just as a reading lamp. Yeah. The roof does open. You've got to release the clips on both sides and then spin the wheel. Always give it a little bit of assistance. Sometimes they are quite tight and it will, it will open up for you to give you a nice ventilation through. On here we have a fly screen and a blind. Yeah. Make sure you don't drive with this open and you do close it down before moving off with the vehicle. In the cab area, the cab seats will swivel round. There's a bar just underneath to release it forward and backwards, making sure you miss the handbrake. It will then slide all the way forward and lock in place. Locks in place just there. And to release it, you just pull the lever back and that slides it round for you just there. The cab itself's got steering wheel controls, electric windows on both sides and mirror switches, windscreen wipers, lights, on this side, speed limiter and cruise control on there. It's the new nine speed Fiat box. So you've got the proper park, reverse, neutral, and you've got the manual option to drive it. We've got the, the phone holder, a tablet holder, which you just pull towards you. Pull the lever down and that will allow you to put your units there. 
clip the two back up and press the little handle in at the side and then firmly down there. You've got the radio where the phone and media functions, media functions going underneath. We've got traction plus, hill descent, lock button and your air conditioning. A couple of charging points just there as well for you. The seats adjust just on the insides to front and rear sections to lift it up and down and then lumbar support just on the little turn lever there. The bed itself can make into a bed at the front and I'll show you how to do that. I'll start with the cushions all removed and do it in a couple of steps. The first step I always find it easier moving the cushions are. So they will lift up with the cushions on and really reveal some sort of storage underneath here. This is where your pump's located and your leisure battery. There is a fuse on the top of there and your main control panel. So your main control panel is your master shutdown. It's all nice and neatly labelled at the side of it, which each one is. Got all your main fuses, again, which relate to the fuses there. You've got your breakers, which relate to your breaker options there. Test button. So if you think you've not got power coming to the vehicle and you're not sure if it's the van or the actual site that you're using, press this button. If it works like it did there, it should flick down. To reset it, just turn it back on. You've also got a light button to tell you when you press it in that your charge is coming, your charges, power's there, and your heating and your hot water button. If you want to turn them off, then you can do that there. You've also got a button that will tell you if you've got reverse polarity. To shut the system down completely, you can press that button and that nothing in the vehicle will work. Yeah, until you press that button back on again and then it will kick it all back into life. Yeah, you've also got under here a little tap for your uh, gas side of it. So again, if you want to isolate it, it tells you clearly how to do that there. That's your main master box. To get the bed operational, you need to lift up the legs and you'll do that on both sides. Yeah, what I tend to do is extend it there and then pull it out. Do the same on the other side, just like so. Then we'll put the cushions down. And then there we are, the base of your second bed at the front of the vehicle. Just like so. On fitting the cushions back, you'll see that there's a little Velcro strap. Just holds a little helmet down at the front. And on the actual seats themselves, they've got little clips to hold it in place. They just pop in place there. And these are on each of the cushions to stop the cushions moving around in transit. To take them off, you just simply pull it as it tells you just on the tab there. And then we're back up and running for our daily use. There's an extender piece on here to give you an extra bit of kitchen preparation area. To get it down, you just pull the two little levers down and then it will sit flush just at the side there. Yeah, we've got a little storage compartment just underneath there. The carpets are all fully removable as well for you. And that concludes our instructional video. I hope you find the video useful. We hope you enjoy your new motorhome. We look forward to your feedbacks and comments, but more importantly, we hope you enjoy your motorhome and it takes you on many new adventures. Thank you.